Devin. It's good. This is this is yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chiara, when will I be able to come to Italy? Uh, I don't know. I hope yeah. soon. <laughs> it won't be till next year, probably. I don't know, honestly, because yeah. if I only think that normally we should be allowed to go out of our region uh, the three of um, the third of June. Uh, I don't know how, how and when we will be able to go out of Italy. You know, it's and I've heard that if you go to so many mm, so many countries now, they um they ask you to do the quarantine when you arrive oh. and in italy at the moment uh, every region have uh, a different uh, rule more or less are the same but some have um some more uh, rules to respect and uh, example there are some region that if you go there even if you can't at the moment, but if you have a special reason, then you can. If mm. you go there, then you need to do 15 days of quarantine. Some others, if you go there, you don't you don't have to do it. Yeah. So it's yeah. a bit... In Italy, we are getting better, but uh, it's still really difficult. Mm. What do you think, like, for the championship, um, that... The, the round, um, that next round that in front have said tentatively or possibly uh, in Turkey, but it's it's at the beginning of September. Um, th this is 12 weeks away. <laughs> what, yeah, how, um, how, do you, how do you feel? Um, well, honestly... Uh, I think it's difficult for us to to know what is go what's gonna happen, but mm. at the same time, I I guess it's difficult for the organization to mm. to also know what's gonna happen. You know, because we don't know what's gonna happen about uh, our own uh, life, normal life. So it's difficult to know be um about the, all the sports and uh, events so it's difficult also because um like i said every country is different every region is different so uh, we don't know for sure um we will know but we don't know at the moment uh, how is turkey situation uh, yeah. but for sure this is not the first round because uh demand we start earlier if you look at the calendar but um for what i know they said that um the calendar it's um based um at the same consistency um as the calendar that were published before oh, so yeah. it's not sure and it's just a supposed so for mm -hmm. sure they will hope that it will be possible to respect the calendar they publish now but um they don't know and we don't know and uh, turkey is already you know a country that uh, <laughs> some places are not so sure uh, yeah. already in a normal life so um, uh, i don't know <laughs> in this situation mm. uh, but um, i think we only have to wait and see what happened also because at the moment they says in italy that uh after the summertime we will have uh, um some so many uh cases of uh, the virus uh, again so i don't know honestly okay. i don't know 
Yeah. It's a really yeah. difficult situation for each of us. Mm, yeah, yeah. But what, um, given the difficulty and the uncertainty and um, the possible calendar, um, how is it affecting your training, Kara? Like, are you positive and and you're you're keeping up your fitness? I mean, you won't want to be peaking. Um, you won't want to be overtraining. Yeah, how how are you planning it? Well, at the moment, uh, you know, as you don't know uh, where the, when the next race is gonna be, but you can only suppose that it will be in September. What I'm doing is to uh, ride in uh, at the moment twice a week, okay. but I'm training every okay. day anyway uh, because if I don't go riding, then I I train at the gym. So uh, we are trying to uh, keep myself um, on shape and train. Um, just in case the the season will start again, and I hope so. Um, mm. But at the same time, I cannot overtrain because uh, nothing is sure at the moment. So you cannot yeah. even prepare yourself thinking uh, my next race is gonna be that time, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to push too much because uh, I think in my case, then each of us are different. But in my case. It makes no sense. So yeah. yeah, I just go riding, have fun, stay on the bike, uh, and uh, enjoy. Uh, we try to spend uh, the summer, um, possibly in Sardinia, so that mm -hmm. I can go riding and at the same time bring Skylar to the beach. So yeah, we will try to put together the both things. Okay. Yeah. And um, how do you feel um, with that break that we've had where there has been no racing? Um, coming off the back of those early rounds, which were weekends back to back, it, it was quite intense, Kara. and now we've had nothing. Um, how do you feel physically and, and mentally? Um, I know difficult with with COVID nineteen, but um, I'm thinking that has this been of any benefit for you to have a break? Well, uh, you mean this break, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, honestly, um, if we didn't had this problem, mm -hmm. um. I was happy to have a break um, in between races because then I, I had a more chance to train and uh, get used to the new bike and uh, prepare myself for the next round. But with what happened, I basically had more than a year off the bike, two months on mm -hmm. the bike and three, <laughs> two months, three, two, two months and a half off, you know. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we joke at home and we say like, okay, now I'm going to train two months and then I, I'm going to get other two months off, you know. <laughs> so, so for me, well, if if you have to think uh, about everything, you would say uh, it's, it's, not, it's not good at all. But no, at the same no, time, no. I really feel really, really good physically and mentally. And when mm. I was back on the bike after two months off, I was feeling even better than when I was racing in Valkensvar or England. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know for what reason, but my body and myself mm. felt better with the break than yeah. than before. So yeah. probably my, my body is still healing up and uh, the training that I did physically for two months help with myself to arrive to be back on the bike and be uh, more ready than before so mm -hmm. i feel good honestly because um, 
normally it's really difficult to have such a big break in between races and then go racing and it's it feels like starting a new championship again but at the moment i don't know for, probably because i became a mom i'm just having um a different mentality and getting the thing different so i'm thinking every single day day by day and um, i don't think about when it will be how it will be i just think every day and then the day i know that the day after i will have to race then i will think about how i have to race yeah and i will take the day by day even at the race i don't want any pressure anymore which i normally had the past years because you you know you are up to the championship being being the world champion and things like that at the moment i'm just thinking completely different and i'm enjoying like like it was my first day on the bike so i don't stress too much about the championship when it will start if it will start if and when it will i will be ready to to mm. race <laughs> You um, when you when you came out on those opening rounds at the beginning of the year, um, it it was it was honestly amazing how prepared you were with such little time, um, back on the bike, uh, and I think you have a certain ability, Cara, that you know your body really well, so that you know yeah. whereabouts your limits are and and then you know when you need to have a rest or um take yourself away from from that pressure zone because to come out at, at Madeley and in Valkenswald and you were on the podium for both rounds you haven't raced for a year <laughs> And, and and you had Skylar as well. It, it really is amazing. Um, can you think back to to Madeley and Rock and Smart? Um, what was your prior, priority going into both of those rounds? Um, yeah, of course. What you said it's completely true because um, this is the the reality. I mean, I was my mom pregnant like every mom and uh, I, I was even one late uh, Skylar born even one one week late so uh, you know I, I completely I take completely the full time of a pregnancy and um, and then and then I had only two months uh, of training which means 15 hours on the bike before before the first round and especially I had uh, probably 14 hours on a Yama and not even an hour on the KTM so <laughs> that was the that was the main thing that I brought to uh, Matterly and when I when I sat on the bike before practice I was thinking I didn't feel that I was on my bike you know I felt I was sitting on a bike of someone, someone else, because after more than ten years on a Yamaha, you cannot pretend to be feeling on your bike on a KTM after trying it only once. So that was a that was a crazy. But at the same time, I knew that I was on a right bike and uh, I had everything I needed to. Um, to to race good and, and and do my best. Um, my only question uh, that I didn't know um, the answer was how I would have react to a world championship model because um, I've been out of competition for so long that training mm -hmm. is not the same as racing. So I didn't know about the pressures. I didn't know about the contact. I didn't know about uh, um, um, my body resist resistance. So mm -hmm. it, it was uh, it was a big question for me. And uh, end of the first race, first moto, when I finished second, um, 
I already had the answer. And uh, I was completely surprised, me and my family, because the answer was that I was ready and asked to fight for the championship and fight for the podium. So we were all surprised, but I felt amazing on the bike. I never had a problem during the race, apart the start. And uh, I felt completely good uh, with my body. I've never been tired, no one race. And Mm -hmm. um, that was completely amazing for me. So we found out that um, the way we train, the way we... um, we uh, set the mind and the way we um, we think and we do the things, um, it's right for me. It, it works. Mm-hmm. It was much better than the past years. Yeah. yeah. And I think probably what, um, what, was, what was amazing was the conditions that Metalie, you know, that they had a storm, the track was was um was underwater in part. and then in Vulcanswad um, the weather was the same. It, it, was, it was really wet. Um, can you tell can you tell us about that that first race in Vulcanswad? Uh, you you took the win. Um, it, it it was you know it was amazing to see. Uh, when other when other riders were struggling, Kiara, um, you you made that gap and and you held the line all the way to the kicker. Uh, what was that? What was that first race at Valkenswaard? What what was your main goal? Well, for sure, after after um Matali, I I went to Valkenswaard thinking I want to win because uh, my goal was not anymore being on the podium, but winning, because this is what I felt. And uh, I, felt, I felt the possibility to do this. Um, so I wanted to see my name at the top every time I was on the bike. So we did the best lap time in the time, uh, free practice, best lap time in time practice, and first on the first race so that that was just perfect if it wasn't for the second race that would have been an amazing week and where mm-hmm. it was like like a, a world championship win yeah. um, it was just a shame for the second race but um i was anyway happy because uh the track was really really difficult but i didn't feel didn't really felt that was that difficult while I was riding because mm-hmm. I don't know I just think that with the new bike um it helped me a lot to not struggle with the track and uh, um don't get tired I don't know it's really really hard mm-hmm. to explain but um even now after two months of break I go riding and I do models of 20 minutes 20 minutes plus two laps mm. and I don't even get tired mm. uh, so I think the bike helped me really much um, mm. to not get stuck anywhere in the mud or in the sand and uh, to don't get tired so f- probably for the engine that I have and the frame that I have um, helps you a lot and uh, for me it, it was easy to win the first race apart that i had that mistake at the end of the last lap where i jumped off the bike with the lap rider mm. um, apart that um, i just led it all the race really easy which i don't remember the last time that i that i did that so yeah. Yeah, I'm just really happy with the decision we made because I found the I found the wheel of riding again so much when I changed the bike and uh, I didn't have so much fun with the Yamaha. So um, I I just enjoy so much in the moment and it helps me a lot. Mm. 
Okay, let's um, the the this is uh, this is Madeleine Basin, um, both races, uh, run one and two, and um, I'll just play it for people who are watching. Chiara Fontanese on the inside here, over on the left. She was 19th at the end of the uh, first lap, on the first split, sorry. Nasey was all over the back of that battle. She made this pass on Larissa Papamaya to move into fourth place on lap two. As the number eight of Fontanese doing her best to work her way through traffic, this pass on the 301 of Jordan Jarvis moved her into sixth, which is eventually the finished place for the Italian. Duncan, Papamaya, Fontanese, your podium, Van der Ven and Volk, your top five. Were you, um, Clara, were you surprised that that your speed was uh, right, right up against, um, right up the front. Given yes. you know, you know, you'd had all that time off the bike. Um, yeah, I was surprised uh, because I know that I have the speed to set uh, the best lap time in qualifying. Example, uh, but that is one lap, so. I knew that I could, uh, I could be in the front in the qualifying, but I didn't know that I could be in the front and pass fast uh, during a race. So I was really surprised because I didn't expect to be so ready and so fast mm. um, for 20 minutes. And uh, this is the reason why I was expecting the level was much higher. And I don't know, probably... Coming, uh, coming from a year off, uh, it's like um, you feel like you're looking things from the outside and no more from the inside. And mm -hmm. uh, and I found out that the level is not that high like I was thinking. Mm -hmm. So uh, because if if it wasn't easy, it wasn't difficult for me to be there after two months of training. It means that if I have a full year of training then i can be much more competitive so mm -hmm. for me for sure it's better like this but i don't know honestly if the level went down or if i was uh <laughs> better than than the year that i stopped this i don't know when you look at um when you look at the year of Tyler, um you know you 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 didn't feel well um, in 2018, Carrie, you know, and it went through the whole season. And um, and it affected your eating and what you could eat. Um, you you had that tired feeling. That Do you think it, it was a point of because you'd achieved um, well, five championship wins. Do you think there was a lot of stress that had built up, or was it overtraining? Yeah, like yeah, we 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 found out that because uh, I went to um, many doctors, but no one could even find a, a reason why, because mm. the problem I had were um, strange. Because normally I don't have those kind of problem because you're supposed to be healthy. But at the same time, those problems we found out that came out because I was uh, probably too much stressed and, mm. and I was completely yeah. in an overtraining mentally and physically. Yeah. And uh, yeah. before uh, round one this, this year, I went for a check and um, uh, a machine that uh, that read your body, kind of read your body. Mm. Uh, found out that uh, I was just out of an overtraining. So finally, we also got the answer oh. from a machine. But um, I felt it first on my body because the day I completely stopped because um, I found out I was pregnant. I um, started to feel good immediately so one month after i lost uh seven kilos during the pregnancy i started to uh, feel my my head clear and not so much uh, um let's say not 
not like before and yeah. then i felt really good all the year and i think the reason why i felt so good uh the first races this year is because probably the past two year i raced in with a deficit with something that was working um that wasn't working in my body and that was yeah. going against me so then i was struggling much more and uh, i think it was taking my energy and my mm. uh, my focus away um so i i think probably for this reason i was uh i was helped by 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 that because um the pregnancy healed up everything and um i was able to to start the new year uh in good condition yeah, yeah. yeah. And and do you think that um, with six world championship, that's a that's a and I couldn't, I can't even think that that record will really be broken. Um, even if you look at who's running from the road now, they would have to carry on racing into their late twenties. So I yeah, I, I just don't think that this book will be broken for a very long time. Um do you have the same uh desire to win another championship? Or is it more focused on enjoying yourself with your family? And, and racing um, at the same time? Uh, well, it's a different desire at the moment because um, every year you're different and now I'm probably the year that I I never been so different. Um, for sure, my desire is to win. Otherwise, I wouldn't be... Um, training and racing anymore the day i found out i don't want to win again um i would kill mm. um so the desire is to reach the top every time but uh it's just different because uh before i was a kid uh, i had nothing to lose um i was i didn't have a family um i was racing with like with my mom and dad and and brother and it's different now i have uh, to care about many other things and i have a family to grow and uh, i go to racing uh just like um my first and second year uh and third let's say um the feeling I have now going to racing is the same one that I had uh, the years that I was racing in the World Championship before to become a World Champion, wow. where I had nothing to lose. I had I was going there just for fun. I wanted to win, and I was thinking about nothing before the gate, really nothing. So I was just a kid, and... and um, I just wanted to have fun. And this is the same thing that I feel at the moment. Wow. It's, um, well, it's a wonderful, um, it's wonderful to hear from it, uh, Chiara, because uh, not many athletes get to that point in their career that they can talk about it in a different perspective um, now that you've had, um, now that you have Skylar, and, and surrounded by family as well. Um, let's just uh, let's just take a look at the win um, in Vulcan Squad. Um, and I, I don't know how you did it, but I mean, it, it was brilliant. <laughs> Fontanese capitalized. She snuck into second, just ahead of Lena Dam. Quickly, the number eight was through into the lead. Within the next couple of corners, the six-time champion was around the outside of the Dutch guard number 85, Nancy van der Ven. And from there, you'd like to say, she never looked back. Challenged for the lead briefly, having found a way past Pathfire. But the number eight, though, Fontanese wasn't happy. And it was Fontanese who was victorious from Van der Ven. Pathfire was third. 
So you look at that and you think, what 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 do we improve? I I don't know. Is there is there still things to imp to improve on the bike, Kara, or off the bike, or yeah, well, what 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 comes to mind that um out of that those two GPs like what's what's um what would be the focus I suppose for for training? Well, honestly, every, every time I look at those videos, I I have I can see the feeling that I had on the bike because I uh, I probably never seen myself riding so smooth and good before those two rounds, and uh, especially when I look at the condition of the track, mm, yeah. because I can only realize the condition on the track when I when I look it from outside. Because when I was riding, I didn't see that the track was that difficult. So it is a bit strange and crazy, but it's it's like that. So. <laughs> I think we will not change anything we did since uh, the day I was back on the bike this year because we found out that that was good for me. And um, like I said, I don't want to arrive to the point where I leave uh, for the bike every day, all day again, because mm -hmm. I can't and I don't want. So I just want to keep keep it the way it is um, because it's the the way that I feel that I um, have more more will to ride a bike so the day I wake up and I feel I don't want to ride I don't mm -hmm. go ride before it was like riding training training riding riding training mm -hmm. even if I didn't want to because yeah. probably I had a bad day or I was tired, but I still was going on. Now it's different. I listen to my body and I listen to my mind. I don't want to get in overtraining anymore, and mm. I want don't want to. Um, I don't want to uh, go back to that mood anymore. Yeah. So, if I go, it's because I want to have fun, and it's what we are doing now. Um, I don't want to do too much when I'm on the bike, and I don't want to go just for a few laps. But at the same time, I go, I know that I have to do, let's say, two models. But if I, f I feel bad, then mm -hmm. I change the program and I do something else. I found out that it's better for me to listen to my body and sometimes uh, skip what, I was, what, I, what, it, what the program is, mm -hmm. then force my body and mind to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I... Um... I think it, it comes with some years of experience, Cara, that, uh, as you say, you listen to your body and uh, instead of pushing yourself that extra bit, which could put yourself at risk, uh, you're quite comfortable to take a step back and think this is, this is not the right time to do this now, but I'm going to do this instead. Um, and, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. This is the way it is, and it's the only way to stress your body, don't stress your mind. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, normally before I was too hard with myself, my mm -hmm. body and mind, and I was uh, working so much. I'm not saying that I'm not a hard worker anymore because I care on my, about my body and, and stuff still. But um, I think different way with Skylar now, I think different way. I put her first and all the rest comes after. So this means that it's good for my body and mind. And yeah. uh, like I said, like you said, uh, sometimes to take a step back, it's much better than push yourself. Mm. Sometimes the best uh, training you can do is rest. Mm. And this is uh, important to know because uh, rest is a um, um, loss of time normally for the mind of the athlete, especially for mind. 
uh, the day I found out that rest sometime is my best training, the best training I can do, then I found out the solution to all my problems. Wow. Yeah, it's... um. And Chiara, you're not just a six-time world champion. You're you're such a role model for young women uh, all around the world. Uh, I know that um, any films or interviews that we've done, I would have the following day. I'll have sixteen, twenty thousand just on, views just on an article, uh, and I get comments. Um, uh, look for people from people who who look up and admire you um and now that you have skylar uh i think it's even more um amazing for young women to to realize that they don't have to forego their life to race a sport um because there's that push i suppose um, and media drives it that um, you must achieve and it should be it's at the sake of family and friends but you've managed to keep this this wonderful balance um, do you still feel that same um, support or is it a little bit different with the family now that you're into 2020 year um say but as before before Skylar was born do you feel the family is still that that tight um support around you or or is it slightly changed no it's completely the same um <laughs> and probably even more because oh. uh because um you know, uh, I thought that uh, um, the day I stopped, it was uh, a question like um, what the people would think and uh, how the people will react. And uh, mm. I found out that uh, probably the day I stopped, nothing will change because I could experience it during last year where I was completely away from, from racing. And I was pregnant. I still had such a big support, even if I was not racing, probably more. Because mm -hmm. if I look at uh, the insides of uh, my post on Instagram, example, mm. uh, the top one is the one that I published the day I was pregnant. So that has had, have had more impact then the day I uh, I posted the one I won the championship. Mm. So this means that um, I, I, I can never follow if one day I stop riding and uh, that people still show a lot of support um, mm. even if I was not racing. And this is for me the best things because it means that uh, they look at you for the person you are and not only yeah. because yeah. you win or you ride. And uh, it means that um, I will have the same support uh, even if I will not race in one day. Mm. Mm. And I think there's, that probably says a lot about your values, Yara, as a person, um, because your number one value is, is your family and um, and then racing comes after. Um, and it's always been that way. And I think that's 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 pretty much a hundred percent of achieving success when when you put it in the, in that rank rather than um, the other way around. Um, if if there was one one um, um, suggestion or um, maybe advice, because I know a lot of young young women, um, you know, do look to you, Kiara, and and think, wow, 
if if I can be a Chiara Fontanese one day. <laughs> and and we have <laughs> we have we have some young some young girls on on you know on the on the line now in WMX. What what would be um what would be some words of um yeah some words of wisdom to some of the young girls looking at at a career um and in, in the sport. Well, for sure, it, it hasn't been easy to arrive to reach a six world championship, become a mom, line up again. It's a lot of work to do, but uh, I think to reach the top, it's never easy, and there's always a lot of work to do. So, if you want to um, arrive to the top, and if you want to reach the top for you, uh, it's you you have to have the right mindset and the right person behind you and i was lucky enough to have my family always with me and um i always did um what i wanted so i always uh, had the chance to go riding training even if my family were working so it was not easy because yeah. uh, my dad has a job my mom has a job and uh, yeah. It hasn't been easy to arrive where where we are, but you know there is a step and a time for everything. Mm. You don't have to rush. You you have to do your best in every time and every different time of your of your life, and uh, never stop believing. Always being uh, focused on what you want to do. And what I've never did, it's um to to want to be same as some other person um mm. i think the best thing you can do is to focus on yourself um you can have this mindset that you can say i want to win and i want to become a world champion but i i've never said i want to be like that person because each of us have their own story and we all have our potential. So we don't have to look up to some other person and want to be the same because we don't have a double copy. We can only be the best of our copy. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's, um, thank goodness we're further down the COVID track. And we can talk about... Um, topics that that we enjoy i think that last um live broadcast we were so early into um the pandemic and it was taking over our lives and we couldn't um we couldn't discuss anything outside it so it's really lovely chiara to to have you and and to listen to yeah it's just a nice conversation um so grazie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I hope I can get to Parma. Um, I don't think it'll be this year. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, anytime, you know where we leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'd love to see Skyla. Um, is, she, is she there, Kara, before we go? No, she's not here anymore. She's with my mom. Oh, she's with mom. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, um, hopefully we can catch up before we go racing. Will that be okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, all the best and, um, and all the best to family as well. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Okay, ciao. Bye. Ciao. 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 ciao.